Hi everyone, we're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to make a movie showing the whole process from me. Um, this is the way the machine would have been left. Now I'm just finishing up a scan um, to take off the film, uh, prepare another one, ready to go, set it up, uh, process it and upload it. And we're going to go through the whole process just so um, you can see how that works. Uh, admittedly, I'm no filmmaker, so this is going to be pretty rough. All right, so uh, this control panel is now finished. Um, the power button uh, does what it says on the tin. Um, boots up the screen up here. Um, and there's now three buttons programmed in. Uh, this one here starts the manual control uh, application. This one here acts as control C, which is um, like an emergency exit for the um, scanning process and uh, this one here sends um, the it shuts down the Raspberry Pi gracefully but it also sends the um, standby signal to the television as well so this is probably the way that um, the machine will be left when the reel is finished scanning um, except for the fact that the tail would have come out so with that done, you just the uh, pull through the machine. Um, because of the, the tops on the parts, there's no way to um, pull it out halfway through. It has to go through. And there we go. So the film can then be removed. And we'll take that to the film room to remove the the leader and the tail because we need those for the next one. So it's just occurred to me, I haven't actually shown the... Oh, this is Young Willow. And Remy. Remy! I haven't actually shown the film room in a few years on the channel. So, um... Yeah, it's um, become a bit of a junkyard, unfortunately, a bit of a dumping ground. I, I, when I moved the last parts out of my parents' house, I just I put it all in here. So, um, yeah, the main collection um, sits along this wall here. And, uh, yeah, the projectors are where they were. Um, yeah, mostly ads and trailers and what have you up here, so... Yeah. All the sound gear for the projector. And right, here we are. Ready to take apart um, the head and the tail for this one. And I've chosen um, a short little uh, drive-in intermission piece. Um, you can actually see that through the film there. Um, that like hallway one, I think it's for uh, selected short subjects. So I'll get the camera set up and we'll have a look. Right, so full disclosure, the film handling techniques that you're about to see may not be considered uh, archive quality, but um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm doing the best with what I've got. So. Um, first off, this is the last thing that I scanned, so that's the Ernest Goes to Jail trailer. Uh, you've probably seen this pink leader more times than you'd like to. Let's just splice onto the end of whatever I'm scanning. Um, so I can pull that off. I'm very close to running out of splicing tape, so we may run out during this video. That's alright. Got more, I just... That's, um, on each side, it's, um through we'll go through that a second way that works Gonna keep everything off the ground um yeah um cores are at a premium here so i'm gonna do um something absolutely heinous and pull the core uh, out from the middle And I want the leader as well, so... Not too concerned about 
the uh, safety of the leader. That's what it's there for. Three, and there we go. Once again, can I get your nail under it? Um, I don't know if you go from the um, trailer is acetate, which is a is a weaker film than polyester, so. Um, Polyester film stretches, acetate film breaks, so I'll get my thumb in from the polyester side. The more I take off, the less I'll uh, kick myself next time when I want to run it. There's like pieces of uh, splicing tape everywhere. Cool, done. Um, right, so. Let's have a look at what we got here. Pretty sure this is the start of this one. It is. All right, so for that one, we can uh, pop the leader straight on there. All right, so. Uh, you just have to make sure the soundtrack's on the same side. That's pretty much it. Everything else should be fine as long as you've got the right end of the film. You can tell they've shrunk a little bit because it didn't want to go on the pins, the red location pins there. And then hold them down, pull a piece of film across. Hopefully I'm not blocking all of this, but yeah. And, and then uh, that drives um, the blade down which cuts it and then uh, punches each of those holes out so other side puppy's going crazy sounds like neighbors are digging a hole or something right that is that let me uh get them okay so uh, we've got this here, um, and what we need to do is just get all of this mess onto the core. Um, Alright, so I've 3D printed this uh, core adapter here. This uh, was, the plate is probably from, yeah, it's very old. It was designed for the wooden bobbins. Uh, which used a different size, so I've uh, 3D printed this adapter for the standard core. Just uses friction. Uh, you can't see it up there on the other side. I've also uh, 3D printed an adapter that goes from the 5 16 size to uh, the standard core as well. For some more um, high quality film handling techniques. I'm very gentle, not putting any pressure on, on the palm of my hand. Right, uh, now it's time to do the tail. Uh, no tape on that, that's good. Getting all of this because I have the camera set up in a weird spot, so it's really hard to check the framing. And I can put that uh, tape a little bit far over one of the holes, so I just wanted to double punch that out just to make sure. Right. So that's that. Put away, and we're done. So, to run through the scanner, it needs to be backed onto a to a core because it runs uh, head first, of course. So, we need to put it back here and then run it back onto a core. But we need to be mindful that the uh, it runs uh, from above. Uh, counterclockwise uh, with the soundtrack 
in a specific orientation. So that will be someone's core there. And that will be which means that now I need to spin it this uh, way. And it needs to be like that. With the soundtrack uh, facing the sky when it's laying on its back. So we'll just slowly pull it back, just get some nice uh, tension. And there we go, we're all ready to load up on the scanner. Let's go do that now. Right, let's um, try and, I'll try and get this as best as I can. It's gonna be difficult because I'm gonna be leaning over it the whole time. Um, let's boot her up. And um, it pops up on the on the TV as well. So I'll press me um, wait for it to do its um, full boot up sequence. And then I'll press the first of my uh, red buttons that I've configured, which launches um, the Python uh, program that allows me to do the aim and also um, disengage the stepper motors, which is uh, the most important part. So once that stuff on the left's finished, um, we can uh, disengage the stepper motors. That is done. All right. Uh, let me pop this back down here. All right. Which means they should freely turn. Yep. Yeah, cool. All right. Excuse the feet. That's unpleasant. Uh, as I said, this um goes on. Uh, use that as our take up. Get your uh, feeder and uh, your take up, and it goes on like so. And around this one, around this way, through here. This is the tricky bit. Get it through the sprocket hole detector, which will start going crazy. And come on. Trying to get it through the gate. Now this guy. Around the drive wheel. Um, there's no real easy way to do this next part. Locking everything. So it's just held on by, by the friction of the film overlapping itself. So it just needs to get pulled through a bunch of times. Come on. Eventually it will grab. I don't I don't really use tape for this bit. And then it's just a matter of feeding enough through. Um, normally I get to about five or four. So the numbers are going to come through now. So at this point, um, we'll get everything ready uh, in its spot. Just make sure all the film's slotted in slots. It's good. Um, so the proper point that you need to be for um, 
machine to start is that both um, both of these arms are beyond their halfway point. There's a sensor in here. So if we get that there, that like that, that's good. We can lock those ones in, um, C and E, uh, which leaves this one free to turn. Um, and what I'll do, I'll show you what I'm seeing up here when I, uh, Turn that one. Uh, is this guy here uh, moving up and down? Uh, at this point here, I get my focus perfect, and I do that um, with these number keys will give me a bit more zoom. Uh, normally, what I do, I just check those um, those writing there are good, uh, and also these little roundels there. Uh, they're they're pretty good way to. Get focus. Uh, the best way I've found though is these um, SDDS uh, soundtrack blocks here. Uh, you can get those quite sharp. Um, and once those are good, everything else is usually pretty, pretty spot on. Right. I think that's good for focus. So the last one now is the sprocket hole location uh, using the LED. Um, on the box, which is actually detecting it now. Um, yeah, so there. That's going to be it. There. Right. So, uh, that's all set up. Ready to go. And we can escape out of this now. And we'll start our scan. And that is a matter of where are we? Relevance, right? Well, let me just go back to the last thing I've done. Uh, so you run um, the transfer movie uh, bash file, specify the 35 millimeter parameters. And um, in clockwise is the is a running parameter, but you just have to give it a name for the FTP. Uh, what was this? This was like hallway, so I'm just going to give it HWY. That'll do. Right. Right, let's run it. Checks for the directory. All good. The arms move into place and it begins the scan. And it will continue like this for the duration at about, what are we at, like one frame a second or something like that. Uh, I can see at the moment there's actually a problem with the FTP server, so this is not transferring files properly. I'm going to have to go fix that, and then I'll start it again, but um, I'll do that off camera. Alright, so we're here on the machine now, my desktop. I'm not really sure exactly what the issue was. I rebooted both the scanner and the and my computer. Uh, I've just got the scanner out here on uh, VNC. We'll give it another crack. Um, I don't normally have this issue. Um, I've got the quality turned down quite low, so it just um, doesn't thrash the VNC session. It's it's already trying to do a lot of work, so um, we'll run that. Hmm. Doesn't like passive mode. Um, although uh, I ran it again last time, and uh, you know it um, it says passive mode. Uh, um, was disabled, but um, even though it comes up with a whole bunch of 
ugly errors. Um, it is actually working, which is weird. Like it freaks out, but um, eventually it's able to to send the frame. And it's very odd behavior. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Thought I might as well show you the, the actual uh, body of the film being scanned now. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it's working. It, it's attempting a few times to, to send the file, but uh, it does actually end up getting it through. We are, we are collecting frames here and uh, I can't immediately see any that are, are missing. Um, yeah. That is uh, one, it's one red print. All right, uh, so, so all that's left now is just to wait for the for the scanner to do its thing. Um, and once, once we've collected all of our frames, then we can um, start the work of putting it all back together. So I'll see you there. So there's definitely a chance it was the VNC connection that was doing that because I've, I've disconnected my VNC session and uh, the issue seems to have gone away, which is, um, yeah, good and bad. I, I hadn't seen it before using using VNC, and I've been using VNC for a while. Um, so, yeah, I don't understand why that uh, appeared today. Uh, maybe the, maybe it's um, oversaturating the, the network. Definitely a possibility, even though I've got it on low quality. But, um, yeah, might be a lesson for the future. So we're getting our frames. And now light is working well. Um, it's outside of view of the camera, so you have to worry about that. Um, I will eventually be hiding all that away because there, there is a possibility of um, light pollution. Um, ruining the frames, but um, I actually think my biggest problem right now with this is that the I think the power supply is on the way out because the the LEDs seem to sort of flicker a little bit, and I think that's actually causing some color, some weird artifacts in my my scans, like um, where they'll go like dim and then bright. Um, but yeah, not a huge uh, film this one, but you can see how uh, with a larger piece of film. Um, you know, you just sort of let it go all day and it it will do its thing. So yeah, as I say, we'll just wait for this to wrap up. So we're just about to end up here. And in any minute now, the end of the core or the end of the film will slip off the core. At which point the... Um, The scanner will try and uh, fail to to read uh, the sprocket hole for for a predetermined amount of time. At which point it will um, bail out of the the scanning script automatically. Um, unfortunately, the FTP issue seems to have come back, and I'm not really sure why. I might have to try reinstalling. FTP uh, from scratch. If we have a look here now, after a certain amount of time um, of not being able to advance the film, the script will realize that, that the film has ended or broken and uh, will cancel out. And uh, yeah, then we can get to work on the rest of it. It seems to be freaking out about this um, FTP thing. But there's the motor fault that it, that it would end for. So now um, we can just press the, this button which will turn off the TV and shut down the Raspberry Pi. 
and that's good to go and we can power it down and that's it let's uh let's get to work on the other half of the process so i'm not entirely sure what what's going on there but we do have all our files that accounted for uh, 324 plus the zero file and 325 items so that's fine um these older films often have an issue where there's very little definition in this sort of area here that I can um, get a good uh, lock from. This is really good, but um, I, I think the, the tail end is going to have trouble with that. So I'm going to actually just remove the files for, um, for the header and the footer from this one. Um, so 271... You are gone, and where do we start? Probably around thirty-four. So all that should be left in this folder here is the body of the film. So we'll go with a new project. I think I'm just going to call it shorts whoops create that um in our media pool we'll go to live and hw2 and there we go there it is so this is what uh, the raw scan looks like before processing And that quite nice, nice and sharp. All right, so we'll import that in as a timeline and hop into resolve. It's very important with DaVinci Resolve that you save your project every 35 seconds because it will crash for no reason whatsoever. Um, what we're going to do at the moment, or now, is um, we're going to uh, box a small section out for the tracking tool so that it can't actually see any of the rest of the film. Uh, so we had a brightness and contrast filter there, and we just, just dump brightness, contrast straight down. I don't think contrast matters, but I just do it anyway. Uh, and then we add a square mask, and we hook that up directly to that, and we invert the mask. And what we want to do is we want to single out, um, for the tracking, you need to pick an item in the, the frame that is identical for the whole set. And here on these sprocket holes, uh, that would be probably this corner here, possibly even the whole thing because it, it, it's so, it's such a weak reference point. Um, the larger your tracking uh, item, the slower the tracking process takes and uh, it can be very slow. So, uh, thankfully, this is only 230 frames, but, you know, with the trailer, when you're dealing with you know, thousands of frames, it really adds up pretty quick. So, um, I'm just going to have a quick check through and make sure that all frames uh, do actually fit in. Have a pretty lazy look. Uh, there shouldn't be that much deviation. Normally, once the scan is in, in full, um, full tilt, it, it, it'll run all right. Um... I don't know whether I want to run it on one of the ones that doesn't have any tape on the first sprocket. Um, no, you know, it doesn't normally care about tape. Normally, it doesn't really care too much. So I'll pop that there. And we'll grab our tracker, drop him on the line, go find him. Come over here. And um, I'm going to make the tracking item this whole side of this sprocket hole. We're only going to do a positional uh, lock anyway. We're not going to do a rotational one, but uh, you can see in the bottom there what that um, what that track is actually looking for. So this will um, we're going to run through now and um, just watch it see if it how it does with that so 
I'll um, probably stop this and I'll pop you back on when it's done. All right, so we're back. Um, that took about um, a minute and a half. It does it about two and a half frames a second. Um, I, this is not a very powerful computer. It's a second generation um, i5, so that's not too bad. Uh, you can see here your little your path sequence for the for the frames there. Um, if you had any going like way off in the distance, that would be that would be extremely wrong. So I'm going to save because this is um, I really don't want to do that again. So now what we do is we go across to the application tab. Uh, we want to do a match move for background only, and uh, we only want to do uh, positional. Uh, I think you can do rotation. It gets weird. I've, I've never found it works very well. Scaling's very. You definitely don't want to do that one. Um, we can actually remove these now. So if we go and uh, pull that out of line there and reset the line there, um, save it again. Um, if we head across to our um, delivery tab, you can we can now have a look at the, the finished result, the stabilization. Yeah, that's, um, that's come out really nice. Right. So we can go um, as it caches it onto RAM, you know, it'll it'll run faster. Right. So the next steps now is to isolate the soundtrack uh, and process the soundtrack. So what we'll do is we will create a uh, crop, um, not off the main timeline uh, we'll create one uh, coming off after the after the track uh, we'll view that and we're just going to crop down to the soundtrack so there is um for the for the i export on the free version of davinci you are limited in the um, uh, overall resolution of the image um, that you can export i think it's um 2k so it has to be quite narrow um, if you want to keep the full height um, what I do is you go for a Y, sorry, not a Y offset, you want an X offset. Um, and I want to keep that sent. Yeah, you want to click the centering button because you can't offset it enough to to get that really narrow. I'm going to use, um, so ideally you want to keep like a little bit of picture in there so you can do, uh, so you know where your frame lines are. However, because our frame line, uh, the way I've got the camera glued, the frame lines here are just like too close to work with. So I'm going to work with the bottom of this sprocket hole here. So as long as I can see that, we'll be okay. Um, I can pull that right down like that. Uh, you put your mouse over to get a little bit more accuracy. Uh, the Y offset, let's go as close down as we can. There's not going to be much more. Oh, that's right. There's a bug here where the first frame is like um, massively smaller than the rest of them for some reason. I, I can't figure out why it does that after, um, if anyone knows why, I'd appreciate that. But yeah, anyway, let's get that Y offset down like that. So you're going to get some stuff. Yeah, it's probably going to be as close as we'll get like that. And we can pretty much bring this down. So I'm going to use that as my like bottom line. And I'm going to use that as the, the top line, so we can probably safely bring it down to about like, whoops, did the Y offset again. Have one of those days. I'm going to probably do it like that. That gives us a nice margin of error there. So now what we can do is we uh, go for our IO saver, and we're just going to dump these as a set of JPEG images. Um, I'm just going to make a new folder and call it, um, what do we call it? Short SND. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, the sound buttons. Um, I'm going to do all files and then just do it as JPEG. I don't need to export it as um, the DaVinci format. Save and project again. And then we're going to do um, uh, render all savers. And that is going to dump our image files out. That that um, small frame at the start is going to make a loud popping noise at the start of the soundtrack, so we might need to smooth that out in Audacity, but that's that's no big deal. So we just got to wait for this to dump out. Again, it's going to be about a minute and a half. Um, yeah, a minute and a half, 
for was that 200 and about 240 frames that's yeah fairly fairly normal so with um with you know a full length trailer or something like that you'd be looking at um you know 10 minutes to to do this process you kind of go and do something else and come back this can all be left so um and rendering out the final video as well takes time everything else is pretty quick so yeah it's just um gonna dump these out here uh, this is just smashing the cpu so i don't normally do much else while it's working but um if we go in here and then short sound you'll see that these are just being uh, dumped out as um a stream of jpegs so what we're going to use is we're going to use virtual dub to rebuild it this is not the recommended way of doing it by any means this is the way that i do it the problem with this uh, method is that the video files that it makes are enormous because they are uncompressed so here's one that i did for um, like the dolby mancini one like you know how long uh, that runs for that that audio file was uh, yeah it's like 5.1 gig so and all it was is a uh... yes that's that's wrapped up um i'll show you that now like this is the uh the dolby mancini one and yeah i um i use the um boolean to, to dump the color for this one so that's why it appears black but you can see um yeah this is what we feed into the to the soundtrack no Yeah, so they end up huge. I normally just delete these. I don't know why that's still there. Anyway, uh, let's go into uh, virtual dub and we'll just dump out this. Let's see, open video file. We find our frame dumps from before. Mm, short sound. Select the first one and just do a save as Abby. And we'll just do short. The default in this is to, to show the video output, which is ridiculous. It, it might, you you save so much time by by disabling the output. That's done. So we're um, uh, where are we? Short, sorted. Still seven hundred meg for like whatever. Yeah, whatever this video is going to be like twenty seconds. So we boot up AEO Lite here. AEO Lite is a um, project from the University of Southern California, uh, which allows us to demodulate optical soundtracks and it is uh, an incredible piece of software. And I'm very thankful that it exists. Um, so we go new project, 24 frames a second, flash drive, um, and we wanna go to video files we select our short uh do you want to buffer yeah we'll buffer the incoming video there we go so now we can uh, shuffle through so we have some uh, settings that we want to we want to teach uh, aeo light about our soundtrack so what we do is we have to so we show it out it's in mono this one's a mono one if you had a stereo when you move these you would see the stereo separator there this one is a mono track uh, we show it where it's left and and right most parameter is um let me just run through that's yeah the die job on this soundtrack's pretty average huh anyway that seems to be it um so then we show it the frame pitch start right i'm going to set it up here at this this line because these will always stay solid and then we give it in the bottom one we give it a search area so it's free to to move around in in this white box here to find the overlap what it looks for so i set it as that bottom of that line there right it's looking for um where these waves are overlapping when it looks at two frames at the same time so if we run that through now if we were to do a um if we were to do a new sample uh, have i got you, you muted on that Yeah, I mean, it was never going to be a massively uh, high-quality uh, soundtrack, but 
the sun. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, so what we can probably do is... Uh, I don't think there's going to be any more surprises with this one. This is a fairly, fairly easy one to pump out. Um, I don't believe it's clipping. You can turn the gain down on the soundtrack to try and get rid of a, a bit of clipping if you've got any. It's definitely hot. It's definitely... um very hot soundtrack. Uh, let me set that in again. Uh, extract audio, we'll browse for that. And um, we'll just dump that on the F drive again. This is it's such a mess, I'm sorry. Short. Mm, dot wav. Whoops. And we'll pump that out. I'm probably just going to go ahead and... Uh, Open this in Audacity just to make sure that we're not overdriving this. Sorry if you um have an issue with the leak with Audacity uh, lately. Yeah, we got that big blop at the start there because of that, that weird frame. So what I'm going to do is um, just do a little bit of a fade in there. You guys probably can't hear that, but uh, yeah, yeah, that that's horrible. Um, yeah, that's actually uh, that's it's a pretty horrible, horrible soundtrack. Let's uh, get that done, export it out, uh, done, okay, whatever, all right, so now we can uh, come back in here, this is all superfluous to us now anyway, so we go back into the media browser, we want to grab that all right, there you go, um, we're going to pull him into, so the the picture head and the sound head on a 35 millimeter projector aren't right next to each other. They are um, 21 frames apart. And so what we're going to do is um, we need to give the picture a 21 frame head start on the audio. Uh, there's going to be a bit of black frames added in here by Resolve. That's just uh, how it goes. So. All right, cool. So now we can um, modify the actual uh, video frame. I don't think there was anything um, with the... It seems fairly straight. Like, it doesn't seem like it's uh, on a lean or anything like that. And just using my hands to demonstrate lean, which doesn't wouldn't work on on this. So let's uh let's just do a crop. Uh, where are you? Again, you know, it's not going to give us enough. You can't move it across enough, so you have to. So you want to crop it enough where you're not going to get... Because this soundtrack die is creeping into the picture area. That's very common. So we'll pull it out like that. And probably around there. Um, actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to crop this to... Yeah, it's, it's always difficult. I, I think this would have been shown in 185. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it in 185, which is... Probably just just above the top of these sprocket holes here. So if I go um like that and pull this down to there, 
This may have been shown in Academy, I'm not sure, but anyway. And like that. Let's see how that looks. Sorry about the noise there, that's annoying. Um, yeah, you can see some of this uh, dye is creeping in here, so I'll just I'll get rid of that. Um, and pull that back in. 